educator and a piano teacher extraordinaire. She is the author um, of the Piano Trainer series, which has got foundation and intermediate and advanced and the scales is part of that. So it's an ever expanding library. I, I love um, talking to, to um, Karen and meeting with her because she's a complete font of inspiration and, and ideas and things. But we'd like to welcome her once again to today's webinar and also Rachel Topham from Faber. And, I, and basically we're going to be handing over to them while um, she, Karen introduces us to her Intermediate Piano Sonata book. So welcome to everybody. Thank you all so much for watching and over to Karen. Well, thank you so much, Sally and Sharon, for having me. And thank you, Curious Piano Teachers, for being here. Um, this new book is, there's a little bit of a story behind this book. So I had a student that was auditioning for um, a European conservatoire. And she had to play a, um, a Haydn sonata. And when I went into my sort of easy to use Haydn Sonata book, I noticed it wasn't there. I then went to my big Haydn Sonatas and it was there. And I realized I knew all of the movements, but they'd been carved up into repertoire books. So I thought, you know, why don't I try and find all of these really easy sonatas because what i was doing was buying single copies of them or lending these great big collections to students um and and therefore i um i thought you know maybe there's a book in this that i can actually get a significant number of sonatas in there so everybody can have one book at intermediate level, it's got like four to six early advance, and we can play full, complete sonatas. So this is it, it's mm -hmm. off the press. And very new for me, there is t complete audio on this book. Um, he's, it's his first professional recording. Big shout out to Sean Greenheld, um, a former student of the Royal Northern, and the, the actual audio is gorgeous. So we will be showcasing it. I also want to thank Rachel Topham. When I knew Rachel was coming, I had this wave of comfort <laughs> that she would be here to help me with all of these files that have got to be played. So hopefully you'll get a real feel for the whole book and you'll be entertained as well which is the idea so we're going to start with a survey question to ask you all so what is our sally's there ready? okay i'm going to launch it there we are it's launched so how many of you get your intermediate students to play complete sonatas and we've got yes i do or sometimes or not yet but i'd like to and um not yet, but I'd like to is is shooting into the lead here. Uh, we have got 15% at the moment who are saying, yes, I do. And 20% uh, say sometimes. And not yet, but I'd like to is on a massive, oh, it's all changing a little bit, 65% now there. So I think it's a, the, I think it's a clear, a clear victory there for not yet, but I'd like to. So you're in exactly the right place, aren't you? Not yet, but I'd like to, because this is the book that you're going to need to go and get. And it's about making it easy. So yeah. um, now Rachel's going to share the presentation and I'm going to tell you a story about the first time I ever played a sonata. So the first, the first time I ever played a sonata, <coughs> Actually, at about, I don't think I was 14 or 15. And my father was at a meeting in a church and I was very bored. So I wandered off to the piano in the chapel, opened up the piano um, stool and found this really battered book um, of Beethoven sonatas. And I flicked through and I was seeing lots of scary things, really difficult.
difficult music. But I came across the G major sonata, which is affectionately known as the, the little sonata. I'd not come across the sonata before. Um, I, I really hadn't. And I, I just marveled at it. I thought it was amazing. So that was my first experience of the, the piano sonata, which I've actually included in this collection. In this collection, there's nine sonatas. Now, Rachel's very kindly gonna give me the next slide here where I'm gonna talk about the sonatas that we have got. So we, we have got um, four sonatas, by Haydn. All of these, the first one is only about grade four standard and the D major really grade four to five. Then we have a wonderful female composer who called Anna Bonn, who was actually in court with Haydn. Her sonata is actually early well, well, very late Baroque, early classical. So it has quite a lot of Baroque features to it because the other thing that was important about the book was that we kind of took you on a journey of the sonata. Um, and thanks to Leslie Rutherford, the, the editor for this book, we do have that span. It was something that she said, look, Karen, we need to make sure that we show the journey of the sonata, uh, meaning that we even have a sonata by Robert Schumann. Robert Schumann wrote three um, sonatas for the young, all of them for his daughters, actually. And the sonata that's in there is for his daughter, Julie. It's beautiful, but it's a bit different to the others. There's some, there's even a lullaby in there. Um, gorgeous music. And we can talk to our students about how the sonata progresses and the, you know, the form changes. And as I say, he's got, um, a lullaby in there. So Anna Bonn, late Baroque period. And then we've got two sonatas that probably you're very familiar with. Um, some of you may be thinking, well, are these really sonatinas? Well, I'll be coming on to this later, but actually it was dependent on the composer whether something was named as a sonata or a sonatina. They were very similar and very interlinking. Um, so those, one of those just has two movements actually, only two movements in it. There's a very famous um, Mozart that you will know well as well. Now, it's so important to me as a piano teacher myself to have additional content to work with. We all know that there's times when our students have a lot of time to practice and there's also times when, you know, if they're doing additional um, external examinations or they may simply have had a week where they've had a lot of other activities to do, they might not have had as much opportunity to do loads of practice. So, in typical Karen style, at the back of the book, this time so it doesn't interrupt the flow you actually have a whole range of musical knowledge and theory um, activities as well and we're gonna showcase a little bit of that for you um, that's at the back there's also a sonata music map that you can use ongoing to map out sonatas with your students um, as you go forward, information about the composers as well. And when I was sort of road testing this book, because that's another thing I do, I always try and test what I'm doing. It was very important to my students to have all that additional context. So there's information about the composer, when the piece was written, and the wider historical context which it actually appeared in. So those are the sonatas. Now what we are going to do now, so take a 
quick note of Haydn, Anna Bonn, Ludwig van Beethoven, um, Mozart and Schumann have your five composers in your mind. We are now going to do a name that sonata, well, name that composer. So we've got, um, or, or sonata, we've got a few here ready. And um, Rachel has got the answers on her presentation, um, actually, too. So we can, she's going to let you know, you know, what they are, one to six in the end. Um, and do you like Aaron? Do I have the answer? <laughs> <laughs> like, I do know, but the thing is, um, it's, ni it's nice for them to hear another voice, Rachel. <laughs> Okay, so, well, let's hit so, so big shout out to Sean Greenheld, who is um, this for his first professional recordings. It's gorgeous playing. It really is gorgeous playing. And so for your students, they can scan the QR code, go to the Faber digital site, find the book and then find all of these downloadable sort of audio files so they can actually hear. So this is your first sonata. Who do you think it is? So a quick splash of that number one. Who do you think that is? Right, we will go on to number two now. is number two who do we think that is and are we ready for number three rachel oh yes <laughs> here we go Obviously, there's six clips, so somebody will appear twice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> little clue number five. Here we go. Now, Rachel. 
Mitchell very kindly did pick the first movement of that sonata, which I'm sure everybody recognises. But what's interesting is the pianist, Sean, who also has a big studio of um, students that he teaches and he, he works actually in a school and a, a music school as well. Um, he said he, he didn't know the second movement of that sonata. And I think when you know, if any of you feel that you want to get this book and, and have a look at these additional movements, I'm sure you may think the same thing. Actually, I don't quite recognize this. And there is this treasure trove of additional mu music to enjoy. So I'm going to hand over to the lovely Rachel Topham from Faber now to take you through these clips and which composers composed them. Um, we might need to go and do that at the end because I um, don't. I need to come out of the presentation oh, to get the I, notes. I can tell. I can tell, I can tell everybody. <laughs> what, Sorry, what, Karen. <laughs> what composers they were. So, what I need to go on the chat. Who do we think the first clip was? What composer? I can. I can help by monitoring the chat for you, Karen, and feedback. <laughs> Back, yeah so right. if you've got an idea of the first composer just pop him in the chat oh that was a bit of a freudian slip him <laughs> pop them but <laughs> it was surprisingly hard karen i have to say it was quite a tough one and i was thinking now who are our composers again that we've got and so i think why don't you tell oh uh, juliet's come out with Haydn or mozart it's not Haydn or Mozart. Yeah, yeah. I think rather than... <laughs> yeah, okay. So, the, do you want... Are you able to just play that clip again, Rachel? Yeah, absolutely. Tell everyone what it was. Yeah. Here we go. Is that number two or number one? Oh, sorry. Number that's one. It. Yeah. That's number one. So yeah. That, that number one there is actually the first ever sonata I played. It's the Beethoven. It is that one there. Um, it's the Sonata in G major, Opus 49, number two. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're, they're lovely, those sonatas, aren't they, by Beethoven, Opus 49, number one and number two, and uh, really well, lovely. Anastasia. <laughs> yes, well done. Okay, number two. Let's hear number two. Uh, number two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Rob. Uh, yes, we. You're absolutely right. It is Haydn. It's the Sonata in F major, number <laughs> nine. Well done. I love the fact that Jonathan says it's Haydn, I think, as it's in F. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> it certainly is in F, so um, well done. So let's hear the number three. Now, this will be much harder. Oh yes, Juliet. The bon. <laughs> yeah, it is mm. the bon. It is the bon. Um, and it, it's it's beautiful. Um, it's in B flat. Oh, Jonathan must have perfect pitch. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll I'll say something. One thing I always do is a um a key map on my books. So one of the things I was trying to do was having a range of keys. So partly a small reason that was in there is to make sure we've got something in B flat major, which mm -hmm. is still out of back. So yes, that is the bon. So let's hear number four. So what do we think that is? 
Juliet's wondering if it's by Mozart and Anastasia. Schubert from Louise. Uh, if not, then Haydn. <laughs> so I think we're, we're thinking either Haydn or Mozart here. Right, let me find the thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. It's slipped off the pages. Yeah, it's I, one of I, those, one of those. I think it's another Haydn, actually. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. You put in a different movement, have you, Rachel? No, it's on the first movement. Oh, it's on the first movement. Oh, I yeah. Oh, yes, of course it is. It's the first <laughs> movement of the um, of the Haydn. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's called it's called the pressure of doing webinars, isn't it? The mind goes blank. I don't know. Did I write this book? Yes, oh, I absolutely did. Fact, that was the sonata I had to teach to the conservatoire student for the audition. Oh. <laughs> so I do actually know it rather well. <laughs> I, I am but natural. <laughs> so that was Haydn, and number five. Number five, yeah. Is different. Well, everybody's very good at this. Oh, one. Yes, yeah. mm. yes, they got it right. That's the Schumann. It it's is. very similar to sort of the melody, for example, isn't it? From the album, from the young, it has that same quality to it. Yeah, lovely. Okay. And if no one gets this one. <laughs> <laughs> Karen's there, but yes, they've all got it. I would say that's arguably the most difficult in the book. Oh. Um, that those, those um, that particular sonata is actually so much more challenging than it looks. So, but it's absolutely beautiful. You're, you're right, um, it is Mozart, his K545. So I hope that that's been fun for everybody. Um, and we're going to move on now and we're going to talk about what a sonata is. So uh, it's not black and white, basically. Um, Faber have produced a lovely book called The Symphony. Um, I'll ask Rachel to put it in the chat because I think if you are interested in sonata form and how music developed over the time, The Symphony book is absolutely brilliant um, and is really worth a look. So um, Rachel, I'm sure we'll put that in the chat to give you additional black background. So a yeah, sonata, will do. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, yeah. Very important to have a look at that book. It's superb. Now, the original works word sonata meant to be played instead of sung. That's it. This form wasn't actually developed till later on. Um, Clementi actually was the 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 father but Haydn and Mozart were pioneers of the structure and it usually has three or four, four movements but generally it's the only the first movement or potentially the last movement that's actually in sonata form so we have this thing called a sonata and also sonata form and to make it even more complicated it doesn't stay the same. So as things move on, as we go into the romantic period, the form becomes looser, Beethoven starts to mess around with it. So rather than the first movement being fast, um, his Moonlight Sonata is an, ex an excellent example of where you've got the first movement being very slow. So, um typically the sonata structure is the first movement is, is fast in the to to tonic key second movement is slower often in, in the relative major minor dominant or subdominant 
The third is, is a fairly fast, sometimes we've got a minuet and trio, it also could be a scherzo or a rondo. And then the final movement is fast in the original key, often in sonata form, but not always, but not always. So here, um, you can see it on your screen, we've got the layout of the standard structure and also the keys. So if you have a student that's doing GCSE music or they might be doing A-level, this is incredibly useful. So I'm actually um, tutoring um, A to A-level um, AQA at the moment. This has been very helpful um, material to actually go with, through with that student to understand the sonata form and to be able to mark it out to actually be able to mark it out on the music. It's, it's a really good guide there. You've got it. Um, you, it's been properly researched, so you know that you've got a correct sort of representation there. Um, and it will enable you to start analysing these sonatas. So if we move on to the um, sonata music map, um, Rachel's showing it here. This map is super flexible because it's not always the same in terms of analysing a sonata, which is where the symphony book gives you more detail about that. Sometimes you've got um, a development, but sometimes you might have something that we could argue that is an episode rather than a development. Um, so We've got a blank space there for you to write in what it is. We've got some space for the second movement, the third movement. If there's a fourth movement, you can talk about it. But as already mentioned, those second, third and fourth movements may not even be in sonata form. So as ever, as a teacher myself, I've tried this out with, um, with my students and it's just a really useful tool and you can just use it over and over again um, with with your students to you know analyze any sonata beyond the book as well so we are going to move on now to a bit of musical knowledge so um we don't we don't expect you to get all of these answers you might want to take a quick note of of some of these and see you know it, when you're listening to this sonata we're going to listen to the whole of a sonata actually that first one that i had um, brain fog on which was the c major sonata Again, to make your life easier as piano teachers, there's a QR code to scan and you can get to all the answers of, of all of this. Um, there's a full set of answers, so it, it's all there. I mean, there's nothing that I'm sure you can't answer, but it's, it's just quite nice to have that there um, as well. So if we look at those questions there, we're going to listen to the piece of music and then we're going to go through some of the answers just one or two of them um, and then I'd, I'd just like to sort of open up as well to questions any questions you you have about the book um, anything that I can help you on but also if you've any questions about teaching sonatas generally you know this isn't just about this book it's about how do we teach a sonata you know in the first instances when do we introduce it etc so any questions you have please let me have them so we are going to listen to this now and we've got the music there in front of us as well so let's see how we get on Um, 
if we if sorry we just... do you want me to continue that i don't know why it stopped oh yeah can you let yeah it... absolutely i'm sorry <laughs> let me continue that now. second movement and then <laughs> Thank you. 
have to give uh, Sean a big round of applause, even though he's not here. And um, as I say, I think you'll all agree that the playing is wonderful. Um, it's uh, it really is very very special performance of these these works. So let's go through the um, questions, which I have all the answers ready for. <laughs> So, um, what are the opening chords of the first movement? So, if anybody's got any thoughts, stick them in the uh, in the chat. But lots of people are agreeing with you about the performance. Really gorgeous, says Danina. Um, so, Juliet says C G C. So, C and G, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's one five one. It is indeed. That is well done. Yeah, well done. Um, what is the structure of the first movement? <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts? Wonderful piece of music, really, really glorious and sparkling. Um, and the thing is, it's so accessible, Sally. Yeah, yeah. Good grade four pianists can, can learn that. And mm. what was amazing was that the level of progress my students made playing it yeah it was massive it was yes massive. Yeah. yeah flora well done flora it is indeed a b a we can't really say it's proper sonata form it's a b a okay and now what key is the music in bar five of the minuet <laughs> That's a very that's a very detailed question that is, Karen. Bar five. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what, Juliet's got it. Oh, G major. She was listening very well. Yeah, she's right. It's G major. Mm. It's G major. Yes, I can, I can give you a peek wow. at the yeah. music again if that helps. It was very hard to see, actually. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. So. Um, that was uh, G major. Now the next question: What key is the trio in? C minor, says Juliet. No, not quite. She she's in the right area. <laughs> <laughs> Just one bit needs to change. <laughs> it was actually in G minor, so um, it goes to G minor. Oh yes, I can see that. Um, and, and if anybody manages to get this, it's a miracle. <laughs> um, uh, it's name the three keys that the last movement travels through. Hey, get your magnifying glasses out. Yeah, it, it really is. But what's really lovely is I hope that this is illustrating how much additional learning you can do with a sonata. Mm. Because, you know, in terms of preparing your student for oral, uh, just general musicianship, there's just so much teaching content in there, isn't there? So. It, the last three, have we got any answers in? No, I'm afraid that's probably defeated everybody on this oh, case. Yeah, it was too hard, probably too hard. Oh, um, we're nearly there. Yeah, it's... Oh, C Flora. Okay, Flora is right. Uh, it's nearly right. It's C major, G major and C minor. Those are the keys. So, um, there we go. We need to move on now. So, what are the benefits of learning a complete sonata? Let's have your th thoughts first before I give some of mine. So, any thoughts on the benefits of learning a complete sonata? And I think this applies as much for you and your, as your students. Um, have you learnt? And we're not asking you to put here, but think about have I learned a, a complete sonata? That's a lovely answer, Juliet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are these are superb answers, um, and and I absolutely agree with all of them. Um, 
to, the thing which struck me more than anything else was the fact that the students kind of grew in stature. Mm. The idea that they played the full sonata made them feel like, you know, they were playing real music. Um, not that they weren't before, of course they are, but it, it does have a certain status to it, does a sonata. And then the other thing was, it was the level of progression, um, technically, musically, um, theoretically. It's a gold mine of content. Um, the other thing that I have done in this book, because it's really important to be respectful of the editing process and, and be true to the composers themselves. So on where there wasn't any editing on the original piece of music, I've put some in, and but it's in a very light grey. So if you want it, teachers, it's there for you. If you don't, you can easily dismiss it and work with your student on what you think um, you know, the, the interpretation should be because actually lots of these scores, the early ones, you know, like the Haydn, um, they and the Anna Bond, they didn't have any editing on them in terms of dynamics and articulation, etc. <laughs> it's, it's been done in a faint grey. So there's ideas there that you can either, um, you know, employ or dismiss. It's up to yeah. you. I think some of these answers are, are just lovely. So we'll just read a few out. So um, Juliet says a real sense of accomplishment. They might feel like a real pianist. And I, I, I think that goes along with your growing in stature idea. Flora says it's like having the start to mains and dessert of a, of a meal. Absolutely, it's a complete form. Jonathan comments it's great technique workout, understanding the form as well. Anastasia changes in style through the movements and the accomplishment of performing the whole sonata. And I would have also said for myself and my students, it's the stamina to actually perform a complete sonata. You know, actually seeing something from the beginning to the end, it's quite, quite hard work, really. Do you think, Karen? Well, I was about to say exactly the same thing, Sally. It is developing playing stamina mm. and also creating that foundation for the higher grades. Yeah. So if you are taking a student, you know, up to grade eight, they've got to have that training, that they do. stamina. Yeah. Yeah. And where do you get it when there's just much shorter pieces? Mm. Um, the other thing about it as well is it's having the ability to play different styles of music in one go. Yes. The brain has got to switch in to, you know, you might be two time to three time, then maybe a compound time, um, a completely different feel, but making it as one as well. And, and I felt by all of these sonatas being carved up, we were losing what the composers initially were wanting for these works you know so mm. it's kind of bringing the sonata back to its original glory you know and that and that to me was very very important almost honoring these composers yes absolutely and the work that, that they did um and it it is a treasure trove. When, mm. when you actually start working on it, it's a treasure trove. And as you say, Sally, it, how, how much does it build that student's confidence, that stamina, I can do it, I can play it all the way through, and I've played a complete sonata. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I think today, it, they, that element of it just tends to get left out. I mean, those of us that are old enough will remember <clears throat> that you used to have to play a whole sonata for your grade eight. I don't just mean the first movement, yeah, but the whole thing, whether it was three or four movements. And, and it was a big learn, a really, really big learn. And of course, that isn't necessary today. So I think Karen has just spotted, a, as she does so brilliantly, a, a, a gap there in what's happening for, for students at the moment. This is such an important thing for them to do, to learn a whole sonata. 
So thank you, Karen. No, no absolute pleasure, uh, Sally. And for me, whenever I write a book, my primary aim is to honour that reader oh. and to solve a problem. So, you know, the teachers, the reader, the students, the reader, I really hope this, this helps you all. You know, that is my aim. It, there's a lot of material out there, but it, it's about finding things that are going to help you in your teaching practices and ultimately help your students to really grow in their musical achievements. Um, so, I mean, I was thrilled that, you know, Faber wanted to do this book with me and that it, it's turned out how it has, because, I mean, I'm going to be using it constantly. Um, <laughs> students now and, and and i and i'm really cu uh, curious <laughs> all the best people are i think you're fine karen <laughs> curious to find out how your teachers find it i'm always really open to feedback um you know as a teacher i think i have to be a willing learner so please mm -hmm. feedback mm -hmm. how you get on with the book when we reprint we can make tiny adjustments and things so um certainly give us feedback you know we want it to be you know, everything that you need it to be as teachers and for your students mm. yeah jenny jenny warder says i'm absolutely delighted with this i've spent hours searching imslp for decent publications of complete intermediate sonatas so thank you thank you Steve. no longer have to spend those hours there um jenny now there was a question from somebody back here and it was and i didn't we've we've been so busy in our chats that i've lost it now it was from anastasia i'm pretty sure oh yes she asked how are the sonatas arranged in the book are they arranged chronologically by level and is there any idea of leveling as a guide okay so i'll give you the leveling now now i'm, I'm I, I didn't put grades in the book because I think it depends partly how the speed you play it at, but yeah. it's loosely graded in difficulty. It's it's le it's in it's it's in the order of difficulty, and apart from the Schumann being at the end, which is arguably slightly easier than the Mozart, but again, there's not much in it. It depends on speeds, how your student plays it. So. I would say it is about grade four, intermediate to early advanced. Um, it's if you've got a student who is grade four level, a good grade four level, start with the book because that's what I that, that's what I've been using it um, as I and we've asked about. I haven't put metronome markings in because there wasn't any in the originals and I think it's important that we set a metronome marking based on the ability of our student there's yeah. a lot of semi-quaver packet passages in there and there's a you know we we know our students can sort of try play too fast and then they become uneven so I I you need to you're the expert with your student basically and so that is handed to you to, to pick a metronome mark which works best for them mm. yeah I, I think that's super and the fact that you haven't put the grades in but just put the levels because it does depend so much on the student and the speed that they are going to play it at how how hard or less hard it feels and um and all and it gets us away from the the slight stranglehold of always thinking something is grade two or grade three or grade four because things fluctuate depending on who is playing it they do i would say though sean's playing are inspirational playings we mm. had a debate about you know how he was to play it we did go with it being an inspiring playing because actually if a student learns this well enough, they can sound like a concert pianist. Yeah, yeah. Music. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, lovely, lovely. Very good. So I know we're just about coming to the end. And I know I, for one, have been absolutely fascinated by um, 
by finding out more about the book, which I remember Karen giving me a ring and talking to me about it one day, not not that many months ago, and I was surrounded by sheep at the time. <laughs> we, we have chats, don't we? I'm we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, I'm just absolutely delighted that, that you've been able to um, pull this together so quickly. And yet, once again, you've absolutely packed it full of such wonderful material. And, you know, the, the other great thing about all these books is they help you, the teacher, to learn about your teaching and to teach your student in really um, healthy and holistic ways. So we're not just kind of learning the notes and then um, uh, that's, that's it really. It's all about, you know, what goes on behind that. And I know I've heard people say how much they enjoy um, Actually, that book that's behind you that you've got um, oh. her story, um, people yeah, I know that have used that just absolutely love it. And they love the stories that you have included in that. It's Women's History Month, so mm. that's why we've got that there. Um, because I, I did. Oh, thank you. Rachel. Super book. I did want to celebrate Women's History Month because um, when I was studying these female composers and hearing about their lives, it was so humbling. But mm. the music is just remarkable. It's mm. just wonderful stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All fantastic. And and also, I just want to say for those of you that are, have been watching and that are curious piano teachers, just remember, we have a whole curiosity box on the sonata, in particular sonata form, so you can really, really dig into that. OK, and if you are not a member of the Curious Piano Teachers and you would like to sign up to our mailing list, and this means you just get a weekly newsletter from us, which will give you invitations to all future um, free webinars, then here is a, a sign up page for you to um, just click, put your name in, and then you'll be on our mailing list. And we'd love for you to, to, to see you again at some point. Sharon, you've come to join us, have you? I have indeed. I was able to pass my crying baby over to my mum, but I will say, Karen, when the music was playing, she actually eyes brightened up and she was nice and quiet. <laughs> so, so thank you very, very much for a wonderful presentation. Um, and, and I love that, yes, because absolutely just what people have been saying, it's and it's the stamina of being able to play a, a complete sonata for ourselves as teachers, as much as for our students, I think as well. So um, absolutely, really exciting. And I think by the signs of it, that if people get their orders in, um, it's something that they can be playing on World Piano Day. So I, I want to thank you all of the people that have come and listened and some lovely um, comments in the chat and I really appreciate that so I want to thank you for, you, for that you know your piano teachers time you know all of you that have come here I'm, I'm really grateful for them being here yep and we've just shared now the uh the link to the Faber Music Intermediate Piano Sonata Collection so there we go and yeah it's a it's available to to buy um, and uh, I'll be coming to you on Piano Day, which is this Wednesday. So we'll look forward to hearing about all of your Piano Day celebrations as well, I'm sure. Um, it's also um, available to order from all other um, music retailers wherever you usually go to get your music books. So thank you. And a big yep. thank you to Rachel for all yes, the indeed. help today. <laughs> indeed. And for both of you, Sally and Sharon, for making this possible, it is really appreciated. Mm. Oh, well, uh, ab so absolute pleasure, Karen. And indeed, thank you, Rachel, for all the techie work behind the scenes. And uh, once again, thank a huge thank you to Karen Marshall, not just for this book, but all the other work that she does on behalf of piano teachers and music educators across the UK and across the globe. Karen, you know, we do all appreciate all the hard work that you put into it. So, you know, know that when you're sitting there in your little workspace that you you are loved and appreciated. You very much are. So I just want to finish off by saying that um, 
we'll be getting the replay sent out to everyone who has registered for this call um we'll be getting those links sent uh, out via e via email as well so um yep pick up your copy of the book and and get playing absolutely wonderful and actually karen the other thing i will say is that my son was noticing recognizing the the, the sixth one the mozart as bluey for those parents <laughs> who are familiar with bluey <laughs> that one's on there <laughs> that's over my head I've got no idea. So let's not even go there. But th thank you to everybody who's come and joined us this afternoon. Um, happy teaching wherever you are. And bye bye for now.